Hi everyone, it's Nicole from Creative Arts at Camps Area and Louise. Now that we have all of our materials ready, we're going to go ahead and learn some simple tie-dye techniques. Our first technique is called a bullseye. We're going to start by pulling our shirts out of the soda ash. I've soaked this shirt for 20 minutes. You can soak it overnight. It really doesn't matter. Make sure you wring your shirts out very well. And then you're going to want to go ahead and lay it flat on a washable surface. I'm working on a washable folding table. You can work on the grass or on top of cardboard. It really doesn't matter. Go ahead and grab your shirt top and bottom pulling straight up. You can grab it at any place on the shirt. Um, I did this one in the center. Once you have your shirt in position, you're going to start with your rubber bands. I'm going to go ahead and make several segments of fabric. And as you see in the video, I'm leaving an ample amount of fabric from the shirt in between each segment. As you can see, I've created several segments of fabric. This last rubber band, it was a little bit tricky and stubborn, but eventually I got it into place. Now that all the rubber bands are in place and I'm happy with the segments, we're going to get started with our dyeing. I'm using two colors today, and I'm going to alternate the colors. When you're ready to dye, you want to use one dye at a time. I'm going to go ahead and start with our navy blue. Now this might look like a lot of dye, but it's actually a very light application. It's really your choice how much dye you choose to apply. If you want to really saturate and have a very bright effect, go ahead and use more than you think you'll need. These colors are pretty dark. So I wanted to go ahead and give a lighter application. Now that I've tie-dyed the first side, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and I'm going to apply the same colors to the same segments on the reverse side of the fabric. Now that the colors are applied, I'm going to gently massage the dye into the fabric. And once I'm happy with the dye application, we're simply going to move the shirt into a clean plastic bag of your choice. It can be a grocery store bag or a Ziploc bag. And we're just going to tie it up and let it sit for 48 hours. Our second technique is actually my favorite. It's super simple and it's called the scrunch technique. Again, we're going to wring out our shirt really well, lay it flat, and then all we really do is we start to bunch and scrunch the fabric together towards the center of the shirt. There's no rhyme or reason to this technique. You cannot make a mistake. Once you're happy with the amount of scrunch you've applied, just go ahead and take some rubber bands and use them to kind of hold the shirt together. The number of rubber bands you use is not is irrelevant. You can use as many or as few as you like. You just want to make sure that when you move the shirt, it doesn't come apart. Okay, I think we're ready to dye the shirt now. I'm going to use the navy blue, and it looks like I'm adding a lot of tie-dye to this shirt. In actuality, I'm really not. You just want to go ahead and squirt the dye all over one side. Then you're going to go ahead and flip the shirt and repeat the process.
You can do this technique with more than one color. I would recommend using contrast in colors because if you don't, they're going to blend together and look kind of muddy. Now that this shirt's done, we're going to wrap it in a plastic bag and wait for 48 hours. And here's the results of our shirts. On the left, you'll see the bullseye, a very simple technique that anyone can do. And on the right, you'll see the scrunch technique. I hope you guys try these at home, and please send us your pictures wearing your tie-dye shirts. I'll see you next week for a new technique.